Hi, this is Eric with BC Gurus, and this is part two of Webforms, which covers the basic uh, setup of a web form. And uh, we're going to start uh, by jumping really into BC and going through some of this stuff. Uh, just a quick intro, we're going to only cover the real basic settings in this video because uh, it's just an intro to uh, the form system itself. So we're going to cover that. Then we're going to talk about working with the, the form builder user interface and uh, how you add and remove forms and so on and so forth. Then we're going to uh, cover the autoresponder and the autoresponder is what gets uh, sent to the customer when they fill the form out and uh, the we're going to end with actually getting the form uh, onto your site. There's a lot of different ways to do that. And so we're going to cover uh, the various options for that as well. So we've got the web forms uh, admin area loaded up here, and that's uh, what you see on the screen. And you can get to this by going to Site Manager and then Web Forms. And on this page, you're going to see a list of the different forms you've created. Uh, so you can see I've got three forms in here right now. Now, normally you wouldn't name your forms like this. You'd have like a Contact Us form and a Payment form or a Donation form, uh, Event Registration form, things like that. So this isn't really how we'd recommend naming forms, but that's uh, what we've got here for the demo. To add a new form, you're just going to click the Add Web Form button, which will load the new web form dialog box up. And this is where you configure the basic settings for the form. So uh, the most important one, at least for now, is the name of the form. So we'll just call this one Test Web Form. And then the next setting is going to be uh, what workflow you want to use. And the workflow system is about sending you and your admin users notifications when someone fills a form out. And um, we cover that in a later video, so we won't get into it now. And then the next option that you've got to fill out is uh, the secure zone. And this is just asking you what uh, secure zone area the user should be subscribed to once they fill the form out. And you can, again, just leave that to the default. Uh, it's totally optional. So you would just click Save. And when you do that, it's going to go ahead and create your web form and uh, add the default fields to it. Now, those settings, if you're not happy with what you chose, if you made a mistake or you just change your mind, you can click the Edit Properties button and uh, make changes there as you see fit. And of course, you can always get back to the screen at a later time. If, uh, if you need to go off and do something else, you can just uh, come back to your web forms list when you're ready. And you'll see we've got our test web form on the list now. So you would just click that link and it's going to bring the form builder back up. Now in this area, we have the actual form builder interface itself, and it's kind of a two column interface here. On the left, you've got the uh, list of available fields, and you can change the tab to access different types of fields. And on the right, we've got a preview area, so you can kind of see what the form looks like in real time as you build it. So when you're ready to add a field, you're just going to click it from the left, and that's going to add it to the form. So we can add a couple uh, different fields here. If you want to change the order of the fields, how they appear on the form, there you can completely customize this by hand but you can also just drag and drop these things so that uh, you move one above the other uh, you can see the asterisk next to the field which indicates the field is required meaning the user can't fill the form out or submit the form until they have a value in the field so if you want to change that option you just click the edit button and it's going to ask you whether or not you want to make that change and when you do that you can see the asterisk disappeared indicating it's now an optional field and you can get that back by clicking the edit button again over there and if you want to remove the field because you changed your mind, just click delete and that will uh, in turn remove the field. And as you can see, as you're adding and removing fields, they'll uh, become highlighted over here. So that's an, another good indicator as well. Now, when it comes to uh, business catalyst forms, uh, these three fields, first, last, and email are generally required. Um, BC keeps track of each form submission and it links those submissions to contacts and it keeps track of that based on the person's email address. So the same person can come back to your site repeatedly and fill out the same form or different forms. And all of those submissions will be linked under one single record, the one single contact contact record and it identifies the person based on their email address and uh, for various reasons it also pretty much requires you to have a first and last name. Now there are some things you can do to hide these fields and uh, provide default values so if you only really want to collect the email address you can do that um, but nonetheless these three fields pretty much have to be on the form or you're going to start getting errors when uh, people submit the form so it won't even really allow you to remove those fields from this interface. 
So the next thing is the autoresponder. And as I previously mentioned, this is what gets sent to the user uh, in response to them filling a form out. So the autoresponder edit screen that we've got pulled up here, there's several very important fields. You want to make sure you've got the correct email subject. That's uh, going to show up on the subject line uh, of the email to the user. Same with the from name and from email address. It will default to your business catalyst login credentials. That's why it's got my email address in here. You probably want to change this to customer service ad or info at or help desk at or whatever it may be. Um, it doesn't have to be a real email address. You could use something like no reply at, but uh, we generally recommend to use a real one so that you can get those uh, emails if they do reply and uh, they will even if you use no reply. Uh, you can change the text or the format of the email to either be text or HTML. Uh, if you're going to use the HTML option, you definitely want to do a lot of testing to make sure your email is legible in a lot of different email viewers. So you want to test Outlook and Thunderbird and Gmail and Yahoo Mail and all sorts of different email uh, programs. It's a lot of work. Um, for form autoresponders, a lot of times we just recommend leave it on text. But if you do want to use uh, the HTML format, you can use the uh, template option as well and apply one of your site-wide templates to your emails. A lot of the times that doesn't work out so well because your site-wide templates are generally designed for your website and they just don't work very well in email viewers, but uh, they might, and that's an option. So you would just select which site-wide template you want to use. Um, down here in the content area, this is where you can uh, customize the message being sent to your uh, users. Now you want to be careful of the spelling. If this does not match your uh, locale, uh, you can change that, but really you should probably put some thought into this and uh, really customize the entire message. And uh, you've got all the features of the editor, so uh, you can use lists and images and things like that. But especially if you're using the text format, uh, just probably keep it simple. That's, uh, that's generally good advice for things like this. And uh, in the editor itself, whenever you see these curly braces, the open and close, that indicates you've got a dynamic tag in here. So you can see uh, we've got a tag up here for the user's first name. So it'll fill in their name here. So you can think of these tags kind of as dynamic placeholders. And uh, there are other tags you can include in these and you can kind of get a list of them here from this tag insert option. So you would just come down here, select the tag you want and uh, click it and it's going to insert that tag into uh, into the content wherever your cursor was and of course you can switch over to HTML view and work with it uh, that way directly if you prefer. Now once you've got your autoresponder set up how you want it to be you should always test the autoresponder to make sure it comes through legibly and uh, in the act in the user's actual email viewer and you can do that very easily by just clicking the email me button and when you do that it's going to send an email to uh, the admin user who's currently logged in so in this case it would email me es at hotpressweb.com and uh, it'll show you a full uh, example of what it's going to look like so you can uh, use that to test and make sure everything's set up correctly uh, of course the save button is going to save those changes and then you can close to uh, remove that message so now that you've created your form, configured some basic settings, and set up your autoresponder, the next step is to put the form on your site somewhere. And you've got a lot of different options depending on how you're going about building your site and what type of form it is. But you can put it on pages, templates, inside content holders. Uh, in certain situations, you may actually want to put it inside the layout template. So say the details template of a web app or uh, within the item description itself. You could also just put it in the description of a web app item. Um, um, you can put it in booking templates, all sorts of different places. It really just depends on how you're building your site. Um, there's two different ways you can insert a form into a section of content. And that is, uh, you can insert it as, an, as a snippet of HTML or as a, a module tag. And that's what we usually recommend. We'll cover uh, the specifics of why and how uh, in the customized video. But you do have two different options here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So for this demo, we'll just use the most uh, basic option really, and that's just to put a form straight on a page. So you can see we're in our pages section and we've got our test page created here. And now that we've got the module manager pulled up, you can navigate to the web form section. And uh, there's only one option. You just click web forms. And uh, when you do that, it's going to ask you what form you want to submit. So real simple. And uh, we're just going to pick the test web form that we created. And uh, at that point, it's going to show you a preview and uh, you can uh, just put the cursor 
on the page where it needs to go and click the insert button. You can see the form uh, will be inserted just like that and you can get to the HTML view here and uh, hand edit this and make uh, those types of changes uh, but there's really a better way uh, to accomplish those types of things and that's to insert the form as a module and when you do this uh, and click insert you're just going to get this very simple module tag and that kind of keeps the page a little cleaner and uh, you can still completely customize HTML you just do it from a different location and we'll talk about that in the customize HTML video so for now we'll leave it like this click update and then we'll uh, preview the page so you can kind of see what that looks like and uh, that's just going to pull the the form up uh, as the user would see it so it's very basic right now we haven't done anything and there's no template on this page but it does uh, create a fully working form with validation and uh, when you fill this out and uh, click submit uh, the user is going to be taken to a thank you page, which can also be customized. Uh, the look and feel of this, we'll talk about that in a later video as well. And uh, in addition, you can actually redirect to another page on your site if you don't want to uh, display this guy at all. So you do have some options there, but this is uh, the default behavior. So I wanted to go ahead and show you that.